I'm Mike Cruz, manager of Greenpoint Fish Wholesale, and I'm here to show you how to fillet every fish. To fillet fish, I usually have around three knives with me, depending on the size of the fish. One of these butcher knives is really good for cutting through heads. This seven inch curved fillet knife and a little five inch guy. You also need a pair of scissors, a steel to keep your knife sharp, a scaler, and a good pair of tweezers to get those pin bones out. Sardine. I think people kind of think of sardines as something grandpa has in a tin tucked away and hasn't touched in like 10 years. Sardines require no tools to prepare. Any scales that you see on here are totally edible and are always served whole if they're fresh. So to prepare a sardine, you're gonna open up that gill plate, grab it from the gills and pinch them out. Once the gills are free, you'll grab it from the collar here and without much pressure, it tears right off. So now, holding onto the collar and the gills, and using your finger to sort of open up the belly, you'll take out all the guts. As soon as you do that, the rib bones start separating on their own, and touching one side of the spine, you can use your finger sort of like a knife and just run it straight down. And do the same exact thing to the other side. Make sure you're completely free. Then pick the spine up from the center. You'll sort of slip the tail through, pull these up, and take them out. And then you will have a butterfly sardine. Porgy. Porgy is a classic East Coast fish. I always look at porgies as the pigeons of the sea, which is not a bad thing. I say that usually because they have some crazy colors in them when they first come out of the water. Lots of like purples and greens and blues. It's a classic like fish fry spot fish for sure. So to start, we'll grab our scaler, get that fin out of the way, start peeling scales back, making sure you're going diagonal against the grain of the scales from the tail towards the head, making sure you're getting everything out of the way that's gonna get in the way of your knife. If you have difficulty scaling these fish, just play around with the position of the scaler. I mean, it just kind of depends on the fish and how much trouble the scales are giving you. Skeletal structure is gonna be pretty basic. You pull this up, get right down underneath that collar and come out. So you make your first cut at the head. Now, porgies can be skinny sometimes, so especially important to make sure that you are staying tight to the bones. Crack through the pin bones on the ribs, pushing down on them, and peeling the fillet back. Now, one thing I think people don't give porgy enough credit for is its fat content, and you'll feel it as you cut this, how oily the fish is. That's porgy fillet. Boston mackerel. This fish is highly oily, definitely has a strong fish flavor, which is great because it is a fish. Super good for you, super high in omega fatty acids, really good for like brain development and things like that. This fish is awesome and my personal favorite. So Boston mackerel is a great fish to eat whole, whether you just pull the guts out and throw it in your oven or butterflying it. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. So with this guy, open up the gill plates and just snip that very tip there. Work around sort of the membrane and open it up, being really careful not to puncture too many organs. And you'll open this guy up. Get your scissor into the tip of the gills. Gently pinch and twist and pull up and out. And get a paper towel to clean off the insides. This blood is fairly strong flavored, so you don't want to have too much of it touching the actual fillets. So we'll start from the tail. Just stay on top of these small fins here. Make your first cut really shallow making sure you're on top of the bones, opening up that belly cavity, just gently cracking through the rib cage and following through to the other side, cracking the remaining pin bones. Once you have that side free, flip the fish over, starting from the head and just using the very tip, just start cracking through those bones and being careful not to cut all the way down through the skin. And then with your scissors, you'll cut right in the middle of the tail to get into the bones. And once you're here, you can just pull out and crack. Face the head away from you and just get right up against those ribs and just gently wiggle your knife underneath them. Same thing on this side and just follow them, kind of pulling them away from the flesh as you do it. And with these guys, because their bones are so small and brittle, it's totally fine to leave the pin bones in and eat it as is. Bronzino. Bronzino is a farmed European sea bass, commonly eaten whole, sometimes you see fillets. This, I think, is probably one of the best introductory fish, super low maintenance. You can cook this any sort of way and it's probably gonna be delicious. Like with everything else, the scales need to come off. Another great way, actually, to scale a fish if you're doing this in your house and you don't wanna get scales everywhere is to fill your sink with water and scale the fish underwater. 
And bronzino is a pretty buttery fish to fillet in that the meat kind of just wants to come off the bone. So when you're coming through the collar here, you really want to be gentle to only use the very tip of your knife. You don't want to put pressure and start puncturing any organs that might damage the flesh. So what you'll do is start your first cut towards the head and just very gently go down and just open up the spine. Except for where you have to come up to the ribs, you're going to want to put a little bit of pressure and just crack through them. And then go over very gently, being careful not to touch any organs and using small but smooth cuts and freeing up your fillet. And going on the second side, free up the collar. And when I go to my second position on a fish, I like to use the length of my blade to make that first cut. Just because the tail's a little skinnier, kind of wobbles a little bit while you're cutting it. And I'm pushing down on the ribs to flex them out of my way. Once those are free, you can pretty much put your knife in and just follow straight down. And you'll trim up that belly membrane. And you'll have a nice filleted bronzino. Striped bass. So this is actually a farm-raised striped bass. Most of you that will be familiar with wild striped bass here on the East Coast are gonna see that this is obviously very different. But with striped bass fisheries being at such critical conditions as they are right now, it's probably a pretty good alternative for us to start looking at farm-raised stripers. So with this fish, we're gonna have to scale it. And with these fish particularly, you can clean up the collars, and those are delicious. And now we're gonna gut this guy. Cut here, enter with your scissor facing up towards the collar and towards the belly. Cracking this open and just pinch the gills, not cutting through them. You're gonna twist and go up and out. And you should get most of it with it. And with this guy, we'll just take a paper towel, clean the inside out. Now we're gonna cut this guy. Pulling taut, I'm gonna make a sharp angle cut, free up the collar, and then just gently come down on the back of the spine. Angling up to crack those pin bones and get through the belly. And the same thing to the other side. I actually just got stuck there. And a good thing to do when you get stuck actually, say you crack through the skeleton itself and you have half the fillet free and part of it's still sort of stuck on there, lift up where you're stuck and just get the very tip of your knife and just start scraping little by little until you get those bones free, pushing down and angling your knife towards the skeleton until you're freed up. And don't get too stressed, it's okay. Finish your cut. What I'm trimming away actually is essentially the stomach lining, which sometimes can be a bit tough. And as I mentioned before, these little collars actually make for some very delicious eating. If you broil them with a little bit of soy sauce or something like that, they're pretty much the spare ribs of the fish world. Sea bass. Black sea bass is a local fish. This one came in from Massachusetts. They're great mild fish. They're perfect for pan frying, baking, cooking whole, crudo, all sorts of things. This is a very versatile, very delicious fish. So we'll take our scaler. You can put a pretty good amount of pressure on this fish, but you don't want to go too hard and risk puncturing the skin. So you take your scissor, just make one cut, insert your knife, and just start to cut. Peel open, and that should take everything out in one shot. Some crabs, actually, is what he's been eating. This is just one half of the crab. And now you clean your cutting boards. Cut behind the head, open up the collar. You'll enter your knife in through the back and make a shallow cut just along the back, just opening up so you can see the bones. Make another cut, make one here, and you should be good to go. Now you'll come over the spine on the other side for the rest of the filet. What you'll do is you'll angle your knife pretty harshly and put quite a bit of pressure down onto the bones. And then when coming up over the ribs, you'll have some pin bones that you need to crack through. And you'll just start at the tail, use your momentum, and just go right through them. And then sharp angle to get over those ribs, get all the belly meat, and you'll finish your filet. For the other side, you just flip her over, do the same thing. So you'll have a sea bass with two nice filets, hopefully not too much meat on the bones and save that for some soup, and you're just gonna trim. There you go, two black sea bass fillets ready for dinner. Arctic char. Char is a salmonoid, pretty much a cross between a trout and a salmon, mainly farmed, usually in Scandinavian countries. You can pretty much expect everything that salmon has to offer, just a little fattier, a little more buttery. Definitely a very forgiving fish to cook. So the easiest way to fillet these fish is to pick it up from the fin, put a finger right below the eye, just for some leverage, and I would just cut right behind the head on a diagonal and just chop the head off. That goes away, you can make soup. What you do is you start at the top of the spine, just make a small cut, just opening it up, and then very gently follow that line. Then once your fillet is free from the back half, flip your knife over, enter in from the tail with just the tip and just run it along. Flip back over, Finish your cut. 
And all you want to do is trim up this rib section, leaving as little waste as possible. And there you go, Arctic char filet. Red snapper. These are usually caught in the Gulf of Mexico. Fish that likes to eat a lot of shellfish, a lot of crabs, a lot of sweet things. So this fish is pretty popular with like Caribbean foods and things like that, but it could be in a really good ceviche, really great tacos. Crudo is a great option. All of it is great. It's a good fish. First, we have to scale it. So now with filleting snapper, they have some pretty aggressive rib bones actually, so that's something that you should look out for. And they're pretty steep, so you'll make your first cut behind the head, open up the collar, go along the back gently. And these guys have some pretty flaky flesh as well, so you'll want to take care to not be rough with the fillet. And when you come to the ribs, the first one curves in slightly, the second one follows, and then they become sort of normal. So you'll want to have that sharp angle, get that extra meat around that first rib, that second rib, and then just like normal. Just follow it down, finish out your cut. And one thing that's gonna make this even a little easier beyond having a really sharp knife is making sure that while you're cutting, you're keeping your knife clean. Any extra bits, scales, flesh that's on there, it's probably gonna end up getting you stuck and ultimately damaging the filet. It's Red Snapper. Catfish. This guy you usually see fried, blackened, some sort of pretty aggressive treatment. Trying to be nice to the fish. They come from some pretty gnarly water sometimes, but ultimately it is a good thing that we're eating so much of them. They are an invasive species. They eat everything and they're very, very resilient. Because of the waters they come from, you do not want to puncture the belly. You do not want the smell of catfish guts in your house. So for catfish, you'll make your first cut right in the back of the head. And then I like to put my knife in and feel where the base of the spine is and twist. And you'll make your first cut like that. And then really gently follow the back. And once you feel yourself get to the rib cage here on the top half, stop and start focusing on the rest of it. So you'll cut all the way down to the spine and free it up, going over to the other side freeing all that up. And then when you come back and flip your knife over, stay tight to those ribs and sort of just raise the angle of your knife a little bit more, a little bit more until you're over them and the meat becomes free at the top like that. Once this little section is free, you can flip your knife back over and you'll start to see the ribs. Once you see that, that's when you wanna come in sort of a sharp angle, avoid everything in there and finish your filet. Other side is same, just a cut right here. And sometimes they have a pretty thick bone here along the top fin, and you'll have to angle up and sort of over that. Finish the rest of it, avoiding the belly and freeing it up. This is garbage. And now I like to switch to a slightly bigger knife to skin the catfish. So you're gonna wanna make a very slight incision here at the tail. And as you go in, wiggle, 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 and start to make your knife as flat as you can so that you're up against the skin. I'm leaving a little bit of meat here at the end just for something to grab onto. And there's two ways you can skin these. You can either wiggle your knife, wiggle your knife, wiggle your knife, and hope for the best. Or one of the easier ways, you can grab onto that piece of meat that you left and pull the skin, leaving the knife stable. And as you go, you can twirl the skin around your finger have some fun with it, and finish. And then you'll have skinless catfish fillets. Trout. Steelhead trout is a farmed species of fish rated green for sustainability. Very similar to a rainbow trout, maybe a little closer to salmon in flavor. They're strong flavored, fatty, really good for poaching, baking. Anything you do with salmon, you do with steelhead trout. This one has very small scales and are extremely sticky. And these guys can be pretty slimy and sort of difficult to deal with if it's your first time, but just cut right through the head. Again, you can see the fish has main spine, bone on each side. You can just start there. You wanna to aim to be pretty much on top of the fins. And with this, you wanna make really gentle, slow movements. This is not the most forgiving fish to fillet. And again here, you'll just crack through all the bones here and get into the belly. And this, you wanna put a lot of pressure down on that belly. They're very flexible, so they're not gonna break. Other side is similar. Start at the tail, finish your cut. We're gonna trim up the belly membrane. That's still head trout. Tilefish. Tilefish is a deep sea fish, actually. They are predators for sure. 
They like to eat sweet things like clams, crabs. It gives a slight sweetness to the flesh. It's very similar to red snapper, actually. This guy is so nice, you actually don't have to scale these if you don't want to. If you plan on pan frying these fish, the scales actually puff up and add a nice crunchy element to the fish. So we're gonna leave this scale on. Make a tight cut and following up along all the way to the head, pretty much right above the eye, and cut through the collar. Now, because there's scales on this fish, it will be a little bit tougher to cut. So you'll just take it slow, make shallow cuts using momentum. And tile fish are a little unique in that most fish's pin bones just come to about the first quarter of the fish, whereas tile fish is pretty much the first half of the fish. So for cracking through the pin bones, you're gonna need some momentum. You'll start at the tail and sort of just run your knife up until you hear them all crack. And with bellies on these guys, their rib cage actually folds in quite a bit. So you'll wanna just really slowly go along the belly until you start to see the skin poke through on the other side. And then you're gonna wanna go pretty sharp, get this extra meat that's hanging on there. And that should free up your first rib. Then you'll follow it down until it's all free and then finish it. Same for the other side. Just finish off this side. Trim up that membrane, clean up your edges. There you have tilefish. Hiramasa. So hiramasa is mostly eaten raw. It's usually a crudo. It can be served in sushi applications. It's a really good, super firm, buttery fish. I would not recommend cooking it. I definitely think raw is the way to go for this fish. So this, we're just gonna cut some fillets. Now the gill plate on this guy is actually pretty easily defined. If you pull back, you'll see the gill plate rise up from the flesh. And that's exactly where you want your knife to go. And just go right straight down and just open up. And once I'm in, I'll just spin my knife and just get it right on top of the bones. Crack through the ribs here. And because this fish is so buttery, it also makes it pretty delicate when you're cutting it. Same for the other side. Just trim that away. And you'll reveal a really nice fatty belly that'll definitely rival most cuts of meat that you eat. That is a hiramasa. Pollock. Pollock is a fantastic substitute for cod. Everybody loves cod. It's like America's favorite white fish. But the fact behind cod fisheries is that they're not looking great and they're heavily controlled. More likely than not, when you go to a fast food restaurant or somewhere that's selling cod, is really probably selling this. Same family, super similar taste. No need to scale it. We're gonna take the skin off of this one. So these guys usually come guts out, so easy. Clean up and make your first cut. And once you get into there, you can see the head sort of follows this swoop. And even without cutting it, you can look at the top of the pollock and you can see that there's meat that kind of goes down two ways. You wanna try and get into that. That'll give you a nice entry to your first cut. The pollock is slightly different in that top section of their bones don't really start until after the first set of fins here. So you wanna take care to pay attention to where you're going because you can very easily damage the fillet. For the other side, you just do the same thing and just finish up trimming. Pollock skin is actually pretty tough so it can handle this without cutting through. And you wanna just start wiggling that skin and keeping your knife as still as possible. And you'll have nice, skinless pollock fillets. Salmon. Salmon is something that you'll see quite often poached or baked. Lends really well to pan searing though. It's awesome for obviously sushi, sashimi, things like that. With fillets, you're just gonna have your standard portion fillet that you're used to seeing in supermarkets. And with steaks, the bones stay in the steak. It just gives you so much more salmon flavor and it's just a fun way to eat them. So today we're going to cut some steaks. So to begin, we're gonna scale the fish. Take all these off. So to steak a salmon, first thing you're gonna wanna do Make sure you have no scales, make sure the fish is dry, making it easy to handle. You can get a good grip with a large knife that is sharp. Cut the head off. For steaks, I like to do them like two fingers, maybe three fingers thick. So what you'll do is essentially you'll take two fingers, sort of make a mark, two fingers, shallow cut. Same thing all along the whole fish. Also, you're gonna wanna clip any fins. So now for up here, it's a little bit easier to just finish that cut, just to free up your belly. So I'm just extending from that original cut we made, flipping my knife and cut straight through. So once that's good, take your big knife. You're gonna go into that same spot that you originally made the incision. One cut down, and then on the way back, you're gonna wanna straight down. When you're going to finish that cut, put your hand flat with your fingers safely away and just straight down. Last little cuts to make sure you're free. And if you have a little tail portion here, it's very easy to just 
fillet it up, and have a little snack. That's a staked out salmon. Monkfish. So these fish lie at the bottom of the ocean and they have a little angler on their head that they use as a lure to attract other fish. And they have massive mouths. I mean, if this guy had a head on, it would be the size of this board. So monkfish typically come head off. They are sometimes sold with the head on, usually by request so people can remove the cheeks. These fish have a prized liver, so you rarely see them with head on, rarely see them guts in. The fish pretty much has one bone going straight down. So some of this excess skin will just pierce it a little bit just to get it out of the way because it is very tough. And all you have to do is line your knife up perpendicular with the spine and you'll just make that first cut all the way down to your cutting board. Once you've touched that, you'll grab this fillet and just start going straight down, just following that spine. You can see how tough the skin is, slimy and it moves. Now for the other side, you'll just lay it flat down, remove any sort of extra organs that are on there. You'll hold from the excess skin and just put your knife flat against that bone and just follow it straight down. And you can see this fish is pretty much just one bone, no pin bones to worry about. So for the skinning, again, you just wanna free up any extra skin here. And with this fish, you do not wanna go all the way down to the skin. Between the skin and the flesh, there's a membrane that's actually pretty chewy. So you wanna do your best to not get that membrane. So you're gonna leave a little bit of meat on there and you'll know if you get down to the skin because your knife is just gonna slip right out. These fish are also known as the poor man's lobster. Texturally, it is sort of similar. It's meaty, it has a nice bite to it and a sort of similar sweetness. Mahi Mahi. In the off seasons, they come head off. Usually they come head on. Heads are nice and square looking, kind of a goofy fish. Commonly used in fish tacos. Great applications also in ceviche and things like that. It's a pretty mild fish. There's not a ton of flavor going on. I mean, it's delicate, I would say, but kind of holds whatever sort of seasoning that you're gonna give it. So we'll start from the head position. Mahi's fillets actually go all the way to the top of the head. So expose that collar and go all the way up. And when you go all the way up here, you're gonna wanna make sure you're not hitting bones and get all of those pieces of fillet. Despite this being sort of a weird piece, I mean, that's a whole portion of a taco right there. Their spine is pretty tall, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you expose it completely so you can see everything. Once you're at that point from the tail, almost a 90 degree angle, you're gonna come down hugging that spine pretty tight. When you get to the ribs, you can kind of flatten your knife out slightly just to get through the pin bones and then come right down and follow through. For the other side, you just do the same thing. And with these, you'll trim the belly. Not really looking to save too much of the belly here because of how thin it is. So you can kind of just cut. And mahi is typically eaten skinless. Fillets get in your way, you flip them up and get rid of the skin. You have two beautiful skinless mahi fillets. Skate wing. Skate is an interesting fish. They are in the shark and ray family. You can see this is a saddle cut and essentially this is the nose here. Usually the body would be here and then they have a barbed tail that comes out. This fish definitely has a stronger flavor than most, a very unique flavor. I would call them sort of briny almost. Skate is pretty interesting in that all along the entire fish is covered with these hooked spikes. So you have to be extremely careful of that. And because they're in the ray and shark family, everything in them is actually cartilage. I know people who have eaten skate wings whole and they'll eat the cartilage as well. It gets crispy, but fillets are definitely common. So first thing we're gonna do, if you have a saddle cut like this, take a pair of scissors and just separate them. This outer section of the wing is pretty much all cartilage. So to expose, we'll start from all the way back here. They're a little translucent, so you can kind of see where the meat starts. They typically have a pretty aggressive knuckle here, and this is gonna hinder you a little bit. So first, we'll take a bigger knife, make an incision here, and then you'll just give it a quick slap down and just free that off. Now, we'll flip the skate over. We're gonna put our knife straight down here, the tip of the wing, cut through some of the skin, and we're just gonna give it a quick smack. You don't wanna go all the way through the skin on the bottom, and it's just like skinning a fish. Slowly turn your knife so it's flat, then you're gonna to wanna to hold on here, being careful of any spikes that are on the bottom, and just wiggle. And we'll do the same thing, and just take it all the way. So this is a skate wing. You can take it like this, put it in a pan, sear it, bake it, 
but one of my favorite ways is to fillet it. Right along here, you'll feel the cartilage begins. You'll follow it up to where that knuckle was. You'll feel there, and it curves back down there. So with your knife, you're gonna make a score just right at the top where you felt that bone. Follow it all along. Do the same thing on this side. Follow it all along. Turn it away from you and just start your cut. Open it up little by little, and you just wanna stay hard on that cartilage, working in a semicircular motion, and then finish. Now the top side is usually fatter, so on the bottom side you'll take a little extra caution, make that score, and continue the fillet. And uh, this, you don't have to worry about any pin bones or anything like that in here. This is ready to go. Skate fillet. Turbo. Turbo is a flat fish. They lay on the ocean's floor, cover themselves with sand, and these two eyes are used to pretty much look straight up while they're hiding to be able to catch whoever they're after. Turbo is great. Super buttery, not too heavy in flavor. They're meaty and yeah, I would just consider them sort of a decadent fish. So what we're gonna do, we're going to start up here, cut behind the head, free up that meat, open up the belly, being careful not to puncture any organs inside. Along the center of the fish, you can see a depression, and that's where their spine lies. So what you'll do is put your knife roughly where you think that is, and just start cutting straight down. You can free up the tail here too, just to make it a little easier on yourself. And once you have a better bearing of where you are, put your knife in and just slowly start to flatten it out. You'll crack through some ribs here. Again, being careful not to puncture any organs. You can even slide your finger underneath to just free up any membrane that's there. And you'll finish your cut, pressing pretty hard up against the bones to make sure you're not leaving anything behind. And finishing your cut like that. We'll flip it, and now you can see the other side of the spine. So you'll just get your knife in, sharp angle, cutting up through that. And then it's business as usual, filleting this side. So here we'll spin it around. Cut up along the head, free up the collar, find that middle line here, start your cut, and we'll start removing from that side. And we'll finish this. A turbo, like all flatfish, will have a dark side and they'll have a light side, but there's no taste difference between the two. And these will be skinned. Try and get as close to the skin as possible on these. Wiggle. And now these do have pin bones in them, but what's great about flatfish is you don't need tweezers to take them out. You just feel for them and you just cut them right out. Now you have skinless, boneless turbo fillets. Fluke. Fluke is another flatfish, same sort of deal. They lie flat on the ground, eyes facing up. These fish are a little more predatory than turbo. They have some pretty aggressive teeth. These are usually served raw. They're great for baking. They're great for pan searing. They have a sweetness to them, super white, translucent flesh. With fluke, we're gonna do it a little different. Same beginning steps, we'll cut behind the head. And what you wanna do to avoid any guts is really pull a little harder on the fin just to get that belly away from the innards. To cut fluke, put the tip of our knife where your first cut is. You're gonna keep your knife in one position and pull the fish towards you, following the shape of the fish the whole time. You can come in here, free up the tail a little bit, and like normal, just start to really feel out those bones and open up the fillet a little bit. Now, when filleting a fluke, your first opening cut here, you wanna really make sure that you're on top of the bones. These fish have a set of, I guess you can call them false bones that make you think that you are on the fillets and you are not, and you will go straight down and damage the other half of the fish. And these fish typically have some pretty large row sacs in them, so you wanna be careful not to puncture that. These are the eggs, essentially, of the fish. So this is a female. So on the other side, we do the same thing. Open up the head, hold tight, avoid the guts, open up the tail. Put the tip of your knife into your incision. You'll grab the tail and sort of twist it a little as you go. And this pretty much will help keep the part of the fish where your knife is entering flat and from lifting off of the board. And finish off the fillet on this side. And hopefully, you'll have no meat left. You'll trim up the rib cage. Not really too concerned about saving the belly on these. They're not very thick. Let's switch to a longer knife. Get down close to the skin, keep your knife steady, and just wiggle the skin underneath it. And skinless fluke fillets. Squid. Most people will know this as rings of calamari, but I think that it can be used way more appropriately. If you have really fresh, beautiful squid, I think frying it is kind of doing it a disservice. Doing this thing grilled or quickly pan seared in a super hot cast iron for like 30 or 45 seconds is really all it needs. Salt, pepper, lemon, you're having a great day.
<laughs> First thing you have to do is understand this is the body, the tube, and then you'll have the tentacles down here, and this is the head. This is the eyes, and if you open it up in here, you'll see that this is the beak. So yeah, their beaks are kind of like bird's beaks in a way. They're very similar, made of like a similar material. They're very sharp and they're terrible to eat. So all of that has to come out. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the tube and inside of the squid, you can kind of feel it just by holding it. There's what feels like a piece of plastic as its spine. So what you do is you'll take a finger and right where the spine starts at the bottom, you're just gonna separate it. And then once you have it, you'll just sort of run your finger all the way up and sort of hook to grab onto the spine and you'll pull everything out. This is the spine. It looks and feels a lot like plastic, but it's not. And then you have here, this little silver guy is actually where the ink sac is. And if you puncture that, there will be black ink everywhere and you will not get it out. So now to prep squid, you'll push the eyes down and just make a straight cut down right before the beak. And you just throw these away. And then pick up the tentacles and kind of squeeze gently and the beak comes right out. And you discard that as well. So now your tentacles are ready to go. For the tube, you lay it flat and you'll make a really slight cut here, not even going all the way through, just enough to kind of give you some space to start scraping your knife, gently peeling the skin back. And skin on squid can be quite chewy, so you don't want it. Now what you'll do is you'll make a straight cut down very gently, being careful not to cut through the second layer. Once you get to that second layer, you'll start to curve your knife, kind of similar to skinning the fish. And if you got it right, you hold your knife in that position, you pick this up and you just peel it all off. Come back, lay it down on this side, and you just sort of scrape off any extra skin that's left. And there you'll have a clean squid. Octopus. Octopus are incredible creatures, highly intelligent, super delicious, and very intimidating to cook for most people. It's a great option. I mean, it's, it's decadent, it's rich. More likely than not be finding this as a frozen product. A lot of the times they're coming from Spain or Portugal. Once you have it thawed out and in front of you, very similar to squid in that they have a beak as well. It's a little bit bigger than the squids. Pretty sharp too, so you wanna be careful of that. They have a set of eyes here at the top, and this is their head cavity. So what we're gonna do is just cut right in between the eyes and sort of where the tentacles start to meet, right there. Put those aside for now. We'll do the same thing right above the eyes and just get them out of the equation. You're gonna wanna flip the head inside out and just make sure you're removing any sort of innards might be in there. Of course, taking care to not break the head open. We'll flip it back. So now when you have the head cleaned and ready to go, you hold it taut and make a really small incision, not cutting through the octopus, just to get the skin to separate from the flesh. And just peel away any skin. And it is pretty tough, so you're gonna have to put a little bit of muscle into it. You wanna just take care to not be brutal with it. I mean, it can withstand quite a bit of pressure. So I mean, I'm grabbing this pretty hard, but I'm not like white knuckling the octopus and just work slowly in batches. And you'll have a cleaned head. And now, go back to the tentacles. And what you wanna do, this is the beak here, just flip it, and with your finger here, just push like a button, and it should expose itself. And from here, you'll just take a knife and just remove that whole section there. And you can see actually how sharp that is. It looks a lot like a bird beak. Next step would be cooking it, and then you will uh, butcher it once it's done. This is a cleaned octopus. So hopefully today, I've made fish a little less intimidating for you. People should consider fish a little bit more like meat and a little less like this foreign entity that they're super afraid of and that they have to go to a restaurant to get. Nothing terrible is going to happen if you overcook a fish one time or your fish sticks to the pan and you kind of ruined it. These are learning mistakes. You take those and you just don't repeat them. There's nothing sustainable about eating one species all the time. It's super important to just expand your palate and try different things. I think it'll open you up a lot more to experiment in cooking and it's a lot more fun. <laughs>